It's a public health emergency. Officials give live media briefings. Get this block covered. People are scared. Be careful about what you touch. And the year is 2012, when Dallas County recorded 173 cases of West Nile virus. 21 people died. It is still the largest West Nile outbreak in U.S. history. Dr. Robert Haley is the director of epidemiology at UT Southwestern Medical Center. It was a calamitous thing. People were not going outside. Uh, everyone was afraid. Our intensive care units and all the major hospitals were full of people on ventilators. So it was a uh, really a disaster scene. That was part of more than 10 years of outbreaks in North Texas. In 2009, it was swine flu. West Nile was 2012. 2014, Ebola is diagnosed in Dallas for the first time in America. In 2016, 88 people contracted Zika in North Texas, and now, of course, coronavirus dwarfs them all. Dr. William Sutker is the Emeritus Chief of Infectious Diseases at Baylor Medical Center. We've gone through a bunch of infectious diseases, and so every time we think that we have things under control, something new shows up. Experts say there are two reasons we're seeing more infectious diseases in North Texas. The first, Sutker says, is the ease of international travel. In 2014, a Liberian man who'd been in contact with an Ebola patient flew from Liberia to Brussels to Washington, D.C., and finally to Dallas, where he was later diagnosed. And this year, air travelers spread the coronavirus from China and Europe to the United States. I think travel has certainly aided the spread of infectious diseases. Um, people go to areas and don't realize they're picking things up and then bring them back to the United States. The second reason for outbreaks is our changing climate. That's what Dr. Haley says. And of course, what's happening in the long term is we're seeing more warmer winters uh, due to climate change. According to data from Texas A&M University, the coldest days of winter go up and down over the years, but the trend shows the extreme colds are now 4.8 degrees warmer than they were in 1975. And if you're a mosquito carrying the West Nile virus, that's working in your favor. In a paper for the Journal of American Medicine, Dr. Haley found the more hard freeze days, the kind that kill mosquitoes, the fewer West Nile cases, like 2010, for example. On the other hand, the fewer hard freezes the more cases of West Nile, like 2012, the year of the epidemic. The best predictor was the number of hard freeze days uh, in the wintertime preceding the, that, that uh, summer. The impact of coronavirus right now is enormous, and hopefully we never see anything this big again. But many experts do predict international travel and a warming planet raise the risk that will come in contact with diseases that once seemed exotic. Reporting from Dallas, I'm David Schechter.